Following the February Revolution in Russia, the brutal slaying and execution of the Romanovs occurred in July 1918. The event is seen as a brutal murder of the last emperor of a country, and his family including his children. Tsar Nicholas II had been deposed as a monarch in March 1917, and his family were placed under house arrest and moved to a number of different houses before they arrived inside the House of Special Purpose in Yekaterinburg. It was inside the basement there that the Russian royal family was shot dead in barbaric scenes and a number of the children of Tsar Nicholas and his wife Alexandra were finished off with bayonets. The scene of the execution was incredibly bloody, but what is the story behind the shocking execution of Russia's last monarchs and ruling family? Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of the Romanovs, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Most historians believe that the order to execute the former monarch and his family came from Vladimir Lenin and Yakov Sverdlov, who were concerned that the family were being held under house arrest and that they would be freed. There was no written execution warrant found, but it's claimed that they endorsed and supported the executions. But how did this all happen? Following Tsar Nicholas being deposed as a monarch of Russia in the aftermath of the revolution, he became known as Nicholas Romanov and was held with his family under house arrest, initially in the Alexander Palace. He was guarded by the provisional government and was held under a tight guard. There was an attempt to send the royals to Britain and after this they were moved to Siberia to supposedly protect them from the anger of the revolution. They were housed in comfort inside of the former governor's mansion but following the Bolsheviks coming into power, their imprisonment became tougher. The guards control what he wore, and many of them drew distasteful images to cause offence to the family, but they were then, in March 1918, restricted with their food. They were forced to eat soldiers' rations, and a number of the household staff were dismissed. Following the support for the Bolsheviks increasing, the government then in April 1918 moved Nicholas, Alexandra and their daughter Maria to Yekaterinburg. At the time, his other children remained in Siberia, but Alexei, who suffered from severe haemophilia, was deemed too ill to go with his parents. Later, the family were reunited in Yekaterinburg, and they were held inside the house, classed as the House of Special Purpose. It was said that all of those under arrest will be held as hostages, and the slightest attempt at counter-revolutionary action in the town will result in the summary execution of the hostages. There must have been fears that the family could have been broken out of their incarceration, but things inside the prison were very tough. They were kept very isolated and were banned from speaking to each other in different languages that their guards could not understand. Their luggage and belongings were kept in an outhouse and they were not allowed to have access to their possessions, including cameras. They regularly were searched and had their money and valuables confiscated and the compound was surrounded by a four metre high fence to ensure no one from the streets could see in. The guards even had to build a second fence, as it was said that when Nicholas was using the swing in the garden, his legs could be seen. Inside, all the windows in the rooms had been sealed shut and were kept in darkness, covered with newspaper and then painted. They were not allowed to look out, and on one occasion, Anastasia looked out and she was fired at by the guards. They were kept a closer eye on as time went on, and things must have been incredibly tough. The family were given no privacy, as guards could gain access to the rooms they were in at any time, and if they wanted to leave their rooms, the Romanovs had to ring a bell when they were allowed to be escorted to the toilet. The water they had was rationed, and they were only allowed in the garden for half an hour twice a day, and were forced to not speak with any guards. In terms of their food it was very primitive, and they were no longer living like royals. They were not allowed to send letters, but doctors did visit Alexei to treat his illness. It was clear that as time went on, things got very tough for the royal family, and their freedoms deteriorated as things progressed. Their former loyal servants had been executed and shot, and any housemaid that was brought in to clean was told not to speak to them. In fact, four housemaids who came into the house on the 15th of July 1918 would be the final civilians to see the Russian royal family alive. In terms of guards, they often indulged in debaucherous behaviour inside of the house as they slept in the basements and hallways. The guards were permitted to bring women in from local brothels and also drink heavily inside, and despite the house being heavily guarded by machine guns and other weapons, 
the behaviour of the guards was not what you'd expect. The amount of guards was also colossal, and it's believed that in the final days of the prisoners' lives, there were around 300 based at the house. At the time before the executions, the Czechoslovakian legion were heading towards Yekaterinburg, and it was believed by the government that they could have been trying to free the Russian royal family. With this, it's believed that the hasty execution of the Romanovs could have been pushed forward. There had been demonstrations inside of the city, and a rebellion was violently put down, and this was all heard from the prison. It was agreed by the Ural Regional Soviet in a meeting weeks previous that the Romanovs should be executed. This then set the ball rolling to organise the details of the execution. During meetings in which Lenin was involved in, it was deemed that the Tsar's wife and children must also die. It was Yakov Yurovsky who would act as the chief executioner, and he took steps to work out how the bodies of the royal family would be disposed of after the bloody event had taken place. Yurovsky wanted to force the Romanovs into a small room where they could not escape, and he settled upon the basement room for this. This would muffle the screams and shouts, and then he planned to have them shot and stabbed at night. He even planned to execute them possibly in their sleep, and then have their bodies dumped in a nearby pond, with them weighed down with metal. This was ruled out, and his plan was to perform the executions of all of the 11 prisoners at the same time, which would prevent guards from searching the bodies and stealing jewels from their clothes. Permission was sought from Lenin, and although no actual proof of this exists, it's believed that he consented and gave his permission. On the 16th of July, the order was given to execute, and preparations at 8pm were made by Yurovsky to get a driver to fetch a truck to transport the bodies, along with canvas to wrap them in. It was parked close to the basement's entrance, and left its engine running to hopefully, he believed, conceal the sound of gunshots. Yurovsky had already selected the killers, and he assigned victims to each of them, before he gave them handguns. He himself took a number of pistols, and his deputy was armed with rifles. There was no meeting held as to how the killers should efficiently go about their duty. Whilst the royal family were having dinner on the 16th of July 1918, Yurovsky entered the room, and said that a young kitchen boy Alexei had been playing with was leaving. In her final diary entry, the Tsarina Alexandra wrote how she doubted they would ever see this boy again. At midnight on the 17th of July, the Romanov's doctor, Eugene Botkin, was ordered to wake the sleeping family up and to get them dressed, believing they would be moved yet again. They were then forced into a small basement room, and Nicholas asked to bring in two chairs for his wife and ill son Alexei to sit on. He was allowed one, and it was then announced to the royal family inside of the basement that Nikolai Alexandrovich, in view of the fact that you and your relatives are continuing their attack on Soviet Russia, the Euro Executive Committee has decided to execute you. Nicholas then turned towards his family and cried out, What? The order was repeated, and then the weapons were pointed at the family. Shooting then began, and Yurovsky took out his gun and fired into Tsar Nicholas's torso, who fell over dead, with three bullets at least entering his chest. Alexandra was shot with a bullet wound to the head, and then Maria, who ran for the doors, was shot in the thigh. Each executioner shot over the shoulder of the other executioners and peppered the royal family with bullets from their weapons. The room became shrouded in smoke and dust, such was the volley of shots, and the executioners could not see what they were firing at. Yurovsky then commanded to stop shooting, and as the smoke was clearing, the executioners heard whimpers and moans, and they realised that a number of the imperial children were still alive. The noise from the shooting woke many in the local area, and then the executioners were told to use their bayonets and to shoot the survivors in the head. Alexei, who was still sat on his chair, was shot by a whole magazine, and the Romanovs had jewels sewn into their clothes, which caused them to be slightly protected from the shots. Maria and Anastasia were crouched up against a wall when they were shot, and each of the royal family were bayoneted and then confirmed that they had died. For 20 minutes the executions lasted, it was said they were performed poorly and with great bloodshed. It's believed that around 70 bullets were fired, 57 were found in the basement and at the burial place. A number of the stretcher bearers who carried the bodies began to search the bodies for valuables. The remains of the Romanovs and their attendants were then placed onto a truck which travelled for nine miles down a boggy road to get to the Koptiaki forest. 
There had been only one shovel brought for the burial, and many of the men were drunk. It was hard to maintain control of the burial's foyer off ski, and a number of men assaulted the corpses of the family. The bodies were laid out on the grass and undressed, and their clothes were burned whilst inventory was taken off their jewels. The bodies were then dumped in a mine shaft and were covered in sulfuric acid to make them unrecognisable. It was found that the pit was not even three metres deep, and the muddy water did not fully cover the bodies. Yurovsky then tried to collapse the mine with grenades, and it was decided the pit was too shallow for the burials. Men returned back to the mine shaft on the morning of the 18th of July, and the corpses were then taken out one by one. Yurovsky ordered his men to dig a burial pit, but the ground was too hard. More trucks were sent to help move the bodies, and once taken from the mud, they were transported to deeper copper mines. But on the way, near to the Porensenkov log, the trucks got bogged down in mud. It was here where Yurovsky decided then to bury the Romanovs where the trucks were in trouble. A grave was dug, and then the bodies were thrown in, and sulfuric acid was used again in an attempt to dissolve the remains. The truck was even driven over the graves a number of times to press them into the ground, and the burial was finished at 6am on the 19th of July. Attempts were made to confuse those who found the graves, and Tsarevich, Alexei, and one of his sisters were buried 15 metres away to confuse people who would find the remains. They were burned in a bonfire, and their bones were smashed with spades and thrown into a small pit nearby. The burial site remained hidden until 1979, where it was discovered by Alexander Avdonin. The remains were not acknowledged until 1989, and identity of the remains of the Romanovs was later confirmed through DNA testing. Eight years after the executions, the remains of the Romanovs were interred in Peter and Paul Cathedral in St. Petersburg. The smaller graves containing the remains of Alexei and his sister were found in 2007. The execution of the Romanovs was a shocking part of history that signalled the end of the royal family in Russia. The way in which the executions were carried out was brutally shocking, and the treatment of the remains was completely barbaric. Despite the Tsar being known for making a number of poor decisions, the way in which he and his family, including his children, were shot in the basement was incredibly terrible. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.